Hey everybody, Jamin here from Game Show. Um, so it turns out I can actually film on the roof of my office, which is pretty cool. Um, you'll be able to see, I guess, midtown Manhattan and uh, the sprawling expanse that is Greenpoint right behind me. Anyway, um, I thought I would try and shoot up here today, so bear with me. Um, so I wanted to talk about this week is, uh, is crowdfunded games. Um, you know, you've probably seen some of the news over the last couple of days as uh, as the second episode of Broken Age 2 is coming to its release. And some people haven't been particularly happy about the fact that it's taken three years to develop. And, uh, you know, Double Fine was kind of the first big uh, high profile crowdfunded game. But now we had titles like Star Citizen, for example, and there will be pre-orders available. For um, for Star Wars Battlefront, and even even not so much on the crowdfunded side, but just the idea of paying something before it's released. Obviously, you saw that with EA's release of SimCity, for example. Anyone who paid for that ahead of time, obviously, was not particularly happy about it. But there seems to be this uh, growing level of resentment or questioning amongst gamers um, around this idea that you should pay for something before it's even out. Which you know, I think is is ultimately like a very fair question. So one of the big differences, I think, for folks who are interested in crowdfunding is that there is this sense of investment, um, this idea that you are participating in the creation of this particular thing, whatever it might be. And for some game designers, that's been really, um, really liberating. For example, Double Fine has turned to its community several different times to uh, several different times to sort of ask them for their opinions. And, um, you know, they've recorded the whole process and made the development process open in terms of videos that they've shown. Um, but you're starting to see designers starting to lean on, um, starting to lean on the crowd a lot more. And I think where this comes to be a problem for consumers is this distinction between whether or not they are sort of, um, whether they're an investor, so to speak, um, with an expected return, or whether they're, I guess, like a patron, someone who's giving money um, out of the goodwill of their heart. And, and crowdfunding, I think, sort of falls in this, uh, in this middle area a lot of times. And I think ultimately what it does is creates a sense of maybe entitlement in the sense that um, you know you feel like if you pay for something you exchange money that it should be returned in a particular way. A couple things uh, I think that are worth noting. Uh, one of which is that you know one of the biggest problems with crowdfunding games, crowdfunding games compared to any other medium, is the sharp divide between what people think about game development or think they know about game development and the way the game development actually works. Uh, in the sense that I think they've never seen a larger public gap in terms of a misunderstanding in terms of how games are actually made. I think that with film or with television, um, because of the linearity of the medium, I think that people have a better understanding of what that's like. But with games, it's not like that at all. It's a very, very different process. You have multiple different, uh, multiple different people working on different parts of the game simultaneously. And delays can happen for different reasons. It's not just because of funding, but sometimes the core mechanic might change. And so for consumers, for people who are putting money up for crowdfunding, they don't always understand that piece of the process. And I think that what's change is that now they're being asked to put money up front let's maybe change the way they think about what delays actually mean. Of course, this resentment isn't just limited to the world of games. Um, recently, Pomplamoose was uh, was criticized for some folks in terms of how they spent their tour money. Um, Amanda Palmer, for example, has been very public about uh, her process as well, for good and for bad, depending on which side you're on. Um, but you know, one of the reasons why this might be happening is because uh, of, of some uh, behavioral psychology research from Dan O'Reilly, and he found that people who had done something charitable or altruistic or much more likely to cheat in some other aspect of their life. And so I think maybe one of the things that's happening is that people feel like because they've given money to crowdfunding that gives them the license or a stronger sense of opinion to criticize creators when they don't uh, when they don't do the things that they like or do them the way that they would like. I guess the big question is um, what are your motivations in terms of going into crowdfunding projects in the first place? There's a very epic letter that was written to, um, to uh, the writer Neil Gaiman. It was someone who was writing to him, um, sort of complaining that George R. R. Martin, and this is a couple years ago, before I guess before the HBO show, that George R. R. Martin had been taking too long, so to speak, um, in terms of uh, writing the next uh, the next Game of Thrones book. And Neil Gaiman's response was, I won't repeat it here, but essentially said that George R. R. Martin doesn't work for you. That um, some writers take longer and they need to recharge their batteries, but insofar as you ultimately get the thing that you want, that you shouldn't actually complain. And I would actually argue something very similar to people who are critical of the time frame um, for you know for projects that are crowdfunded. But I think the question is that like 
What's more important to you? Um, waiting for something that's going to be good or getting something that's maybe not quite complete, but getting it on time or early? Is that the most important reason why you crowdfund a project is so that it can be um, you know, tied to a particular delivery date? It's important to remember, especially in the world of games, this irony that the whole reason crowdfunding exists is because publishers, who are the people who typically set those kinds of dates and guidelines and deadlines for creators, um, weren't funding the types of games that um, needed to be created. That was the whole reason why Double Fine turned to crowdfunding in the first place was because they couldn't find money from, uh, from publishers who would be willing to fund adventure games. And now all of a sudden when they take time to uh, you know, make something the way that they want to make it, to the quality they expect they're being held responsible for the same kind of draconian restrictions um, that publishers were to be avoided in the first place. There is a core irony there. But I think that Gaiman's words are ultimately very, very important. That creators ultimately, that they don't work for you and that you should want what's in their best interest. And so if they ask you for more time, I think you should be willing to give it. Obviously, if they never deliver, that's a totally different story. Um, but I do think that we should be much more forgiving to creators in terms of taking the time and space that they ultimately need to do something that's ultimately um, going to be good. Shigeru Miyamoto, I believe said it best, which is that a rushed game is bad forever. I mean, obviously he was saying this before games could be patched, but I think the sentiment ultimately holds true, which is that creators may really only have one chance to get something out to the public. So if you crowdfund it, maybe you should be willing to wait you know, a couple extra days or months, or maybe it's years if that's what it takes to make something really, really good. Anyway, hash it out in the comments. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe and I will see you all next week.